Thank you very much. Um, we um, uh, hopefully we have our time back because otherwise I'll flip into 45 RPM mode and they'll be able to understand what I'm saying. But I'm um, trying to take a, um, a, a different twist on mobile um, in this presentation and really focus on what is the, the meaning of this new mobile connection um, to brands and how can brands begin to harness that and activate that uh, today. So um, we all envy and admire brands like Apple and Nike, you know, probably 83% of brand presentations start with a slide like this. Um, what gets these people to pay thousands of dollars for the new sneakers or sleep overnight? Um, I had the, uh, the good fortune in my uh, career, uh, while I spent most of my career um, in consumer-facing categories, I did a fair amount of B2B. And um, I took the opportunity in B2B focus groups over the last couple of years to um, ask at the end of the focus group, which brands do you admire? Companies in all kinds of different industries. And if you're in New York or Boston, they go, well, I, I admire Nike, I, I admire Apple, Starbucks, that's a good one, uh, Southwest Airlines, you go to Dallas, um, which uh, companies do you admire? Nike, Apple, Starbucks, Virgin, that's a good one, um, Southwest Airlines, et cetera, et cetera. So what do those brands have in common? Does, does anyone have a, a sense of what those brands all have in common? besides the fact that they rise to the top in people's minds. None of these people said my company. They all said those, that series. What they have in common is Jobs, Knight, um, Branson and Schultz, and et cetera. They have CEOs that inspire and get those companies to perform at another level. But it's that advocacy and that passion um, that we envy. So how do we harness that? Um, part of the um, challenge is, is research. Uh, the series of Market Tunes is in the green book, and you can be downloading it for presentations to make points. Um, the Market Tunist is actually this guy, Tom Fishburn, who is a classically trained package goods um, uh, brand manager, and he found out he liked making cartoons about his job. And today he is the Market Tunist, and he's in San Francisco, a little north of uh, Motista, which is in San Mateo. But when we talk about emotion, the reason why it's elusive, especially when we try to talk about it outside of the agency planning, and we go into marketing at a broader level and marketing into the business context, it's, it tends to be the special project. We're going to spend $300,000 and we're going to probe and, and come away with these emotions. Very valuable, and I've been involved in a lot of this stuff, but that doesn't help you really apply and operationalize emotion on an ongoing basis. Um, yesterday, um, the woman from the casket company had a slide that was similar to this, and I wanted to make that remark because I don't think I'm going to get another chance in my career to say that. Um, but um, business and consumers just think differently. Um, businesses are data-driven, they're analytical, uh, they're risk-averse. Um, consumers are intuitive. They're not thinking with the same conscious mind. They're responding spontaneously. And that's a gap. That's a gap that we need to close inside a business because emotion um, is an asset. Now, if this was my product, I can look at it, we can decide how we're going to evolve it and change it and change the color to appeal to uh, different segments because it's very tangible, it's right in front of us. Um, emotion has been that fluffy thing. But then we enter the world of, of mobile and we're seeing in data that uh, I'm going to share some of this with you today is that it's extremely uh, powerful. This advocacy doesn't have to be this thing that just happens as a result but it's something that we can actually activate because when people are advocating for your brand, your brand becomes more powerful. You invite more people in, they pay more, they tell others, and that's what gives you that extra lift. Um, we know that about 10 to 20% of every brand um, enjoys this kind of core group of emotionally connected mobile advocates. These people who go out of their way and behave differently relative to your brand, and they have the tool in their hand to become active um, advocates for your brand. So if you kind of take this, um, the intersection of these three things, emotion, um, mobile, and advocacy, um, you have this uh, segment called Emotionally Connected Mobile Advocates. They are building brands today. And the question is, how do we make that tangible, define them, and activate it? I took a, a category, um, e-readers and tablets, um, you know, the Nooks and Kindles and iPads, et cetera. Um, we, um, um, in our study that uh, came out of the field in Q2, uh, we talked about 2,600 tablet or e-reader consumers in general. 
Um, I don't want to make this a research and methodology uh, presentation, so any questions later I'd be happy to ask, but um, we have a statistical definition of an emotionally connected consumer. Um, these are customers, these are current customers. Of that thousand emotionally connected, the majority of them are advocates. And this isn't, I would recommend, this is I um, forwarded an information to a friend or family member in the past 30 days. I actually recommended this brand to a friend, family member, or colleague in the past 30 days. So it's a behavioral um, reported um, measure of advocacy. 672 of the emotionally connected people have a mobile device where they've interacted with your brand in the past 30 days. Um, they visited your website or saw a digital ad on their mobile device in the past 30 days. And the vast majority of these mobile people are ECMAs, emotionally connected mobile advocates and trying to you know, establish a new uh, acronym in the marketing world. 626, so the vast majority of these people with mobile that are emotionally connected are actually advocating um, for your brand. That's a very powerful tool. Just a quick across some other categories. Um, tablet, we saw 24% of people, uh, these emotionally connected um, folks, home products, 24% um, even banking, 16 retail, fast food, which should really capitalize on this because of the, 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 the on-premise aspect, inviting friends late night. We'll probably see that number go up. But um, you know, if there's a 2080 rule or a 1585 uh, rule, these are very powerful people. So what happens? Well, how do these brands get, get the lift? So here, um, what we're seeing in this column are people who are using mobile today to interact um, with the brand in the ways I defined just earlier. Um, and these are people who are not using mobile to interact with the brand or have not in the past 30 days. Forwarded information to friend or family member, 62 versus 20. I went on a blog, um, it's Nook, it could be Kindle, whatever the brand is, in the past 30 days. 5.8 versus 30. Provided a review online, 9 versus 40. These are big deltas in terms of the phenomena of advocacy and getting your customers to actively promote your brand for you. Um, people who come into your brand through a recommendation are, are, are connected, more connected right from the get-go. Uh, saw a video on another site, given feedback, interacting. Um, I'm putting a marketing twist on this, but if you look at it from a research standpoint, you have an opportunity not only to market and activate these advocates, but to learn from them and ask them questions um, and, and have them participate in your brand. That's the ideal. Looking at it across different types of um, touch points, on the y-axis, what you're seeing is a measure of I feel good telling. Um, we know through five years of uh, research across uh, 20 different industries that feel good telling is a much better predictor and has a much stronger correlation to actual advocacy behavior than would recommend. Um, would recommend lives in the area of satisfaction. Um, stayed at a hotel, um, service was good, it was relatively clean. Would you recommend? Sure. Did I recommend? Probably not, unless I was emotionally connected. Here you see the emotional connection score, composite score. And if you look at the lift that you're getting, um, there are people who fail to connect to brands. It's just the way it is. They're down here. And then satisfaction. We've been measuring satisfaction um, in auto and service industries since the 60s. It's peaked out. There's nothing more you can get out of it. You have to maintain those scores, but that's not the lift. Not mobile. Um, TV gives you a lift. When people are interacting with your website and social media, it's a lift. Mobile in general, whether you're emotionally connected or not, gives you a lift. But if you're emotionally connected and you have a mobile device in your hand, you're out there promoting the brand, you're advocating actively, and you're bringing people to it. So in that fast food example, I'm there at late night. Um, we saw that Quest Back example. It's something to scan, invite friends over. Um, you can actually have a big impact on, on the business um, right away. With some more feeling, I'm sorry I'm showing you bar charts, um, uh, but uh, try to get the, uh, the feeling out of it. What we're seeing here is that non-mobile versus mobile group. Um, this is also, again, within the tablet e-reader context of um, uh, Samsung, Kindle, um, iPad, uh, Nook. Um, they're much more likely to feel like they belong with others who use the brand. It brings them closer to loved ones. Um, that was an interesting, well, how, how does that happen? Well, guess what? Uh, 
uh, friends and share books and moms sit down with kids and it, it builds this emotion. Good for community. It expresses who I am. What a great way to um, want to share with others and that the brand understands my lifestyle. It also impacts outcomes. The way these emotions have been selected and, and, and um, um, the reason why they're measured is because they have the strongest relationship with what marketers want. Um, these companies want um, the audience to feel that they have features that no one else has. Um, people in the know, a very meaningful validation measure that I, I'm going to choose Kindle versus Nook versus this because someone in the know um, is making me feel good about it. I'll definitely pay a higher price um, and I'll definitely um, buy the next product. Just kind of a look at that category, a couple of the brands, you have Nook, Amazon, and iPad. Um, the non-mobile audience, you see Amazon has a little bit of a, uh, an extra lift because of its webness. Um, and then when you start to look at it through the mobile uh, customer set, everybody gets a big lift. That's an asset um, that um, we should be leveraging. So just bringing it back, I think, again, um, if you didn't see the Quest Back presentation, um, he made that available. There's some great examples from Heineken and some other brands um, that just integrate. And you know, we as researchers and, um, and, and folks on that side trying to make sense out of it, but we need to be challenging our agencies and um, others to understand this technology, how to activate it, because there is a, um, an, an overlap between the marketing. We saw strong feedback tendencies. Um, and research opportunities. But the clients that we're working with are really just starting, but they are challenging um, their agencies and partners um, to integrate uh, mobile advocacy into their marketing plans, relying less on just sheer discount and promotion, getting people involved, inviting friends to the brand, uh, POP um, that invites people to communicate and share instantly, um, and mobile advocates with information. You know, I emphasize emotion in this, but people need the rational validation um, these mobile advocates can have the, the, the two or three factoids that they need to share with others to make them feel smart about making a decision. Um, and then learning who they are. Who, are, who is this core group? Bringing it back to research, um, I would just make uh, two general comments. Um, these mobile customers are more engaged and connected. It's still a relatively uh, small group, but there's so much to learn from them. So. Um, you should be doing as much as you can to get them to participate, use these tools, integrate it into the marketing um, to learn about this very important group. At the same time, um, if you try to apply mobile today at this moment to broad brand tracking, um, you just get a, a real heavy skew. That will change over time, and maybe over time mobile will come, saw that chart, maybe more towards the middle. Um, but today, it, it is a very powerful tool to learn about your brand and, again, to advocate, um, get advocacy really working for your, for your business. Um, on the chart with the e-readers and tablets, were, were those people that were non-mobile users that owned e-readers and tablets? Or? So th this uh, intelligence that we share today is um, customers of those brands. Okay. And, um, and then we're... we're noted either mobile versus non-mobile, and in some cases, the emotionally connected mobile, where you see that lift in advocacy and social media type of behavior.